Well, this is my friend Cecilia. We've been friends since... Third grade? We've been friends since third grade. We're gonna talk about her testimony a little bit and like my role as a friend throughout her testimony and how that affected her relationship with God and kind of like her struggles. From this video, we hope that you guys get inspired to talk about Jesus in your friendships. If you're just you talking about friendships yeah, and like yeah, how exactly. that impacts people coming to Jesus. Also, if you are a Christian and you are feeling discouraged, I hope that this shows you that God is just so real and people like who you think that really would never become a Christian, they can become a Christian and then I feel like that's something that really can just strengthen a person's faith, so. So to start, before I really gave my life to Jesus, I grew up in a Catholic faith. My mom is pretty Catholic. She works with the priests. I never really had a faith of my own. Went with the flow for a while. God wasn't really super real, but he wasn't like not real, you know. But I learned a lot, mm -hmm. like from CCD. I went to mass and stuff, so I knew who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. But last year, I started to question um, the existence of God or the historical accuracy of Jesus and just mm -hmm. the reality of Christianity, whether or not it was true, I guess. I saw like a lot of contradictions in the faith before. I think that that really drew me away it's like at the time when she started questioning i guess a little bit before that was the time in my life that my faith really became real to me um, by the time she started questioning her faith i was pretty solid in god and i was like i know you're real how are we gonna spread you with people me starting to even feel comfortable with telling people that i was a christian mm. So then, like, it kind of lined up for one of those times. That's so interesting. Yeah, I that, didn't know that. that yeah, because at one point I was like, oh, I don't even care about God. I don't want to know him. Mm. But then, obviously, God worked. And then his timing is so perfect. Mm -hmm. I had gone to youth group with her before. She was sharing her faith a lot with me. Mm -hmm. I was asking her a lot of questions. We had a lot of healthy discussions. It was never really, like, I was being hostile toward you, I don't think. Mm -hmm. w would you say, like, as you started your like faith journey, like, and you started like, experimenting with my church, you were more, like, open to it? Yeah, I'd say, so I think this is what happened, like, I, I don't really have that much recollection of me before, which is really interesting. Before you came to Christ. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Before, I was kind of just going to youth group with you. I wasn't really sure about God. I didn't really, never really, like, felt his presence. I never really knew if he was really real or not, but I wasn't, like, mm -hmm. against him or anything like that. I was just going to youth group, whatever. And I was then, kind of like a, oh, I, I, there's, like, food there, and it's a retreat. We're gonna go yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I would, like, sing. Open minds, yeah. Yeah, I would, like, sing with you guys. I would... I don't know, mm. engage in conversations. But then, I think what changed for me was when we were at a worship night on the retreat mm -hmm. and you guys were all singing, like the whole room was just singing. I was like, what if this is just f to no one? You're like singing to no one, this is so terrifying. Mm. And like, I felt so alone and I felt like really like hopeless. I felt like that before and I started crying when I felt like that. Yeah. I was like, it was what? this is like, people are just worshiping to nothing, that's so sad. It's like, I don't even know how to pray. <laughs> no, but mine was worse because mine it was a mission call so it was like stand up if you feel called to go here stand up if you feel called to oh, be a mission no. everyone was standing up and worshiping and i was just like i don't know where to start reading my bible like, i cried to james and melantina they're our youth group leaders now they're like just start in romans baby y'all but anyway sorry anyways no that's so beautiful no i just related to you on that <laughs> I, for I totally forgot about that yeah like that was just i think that was the oh. first experience that i really like was like Doubting God, doubting the existence mm. of God, because I never really That's had so to. That's so crazy, during worship. Yeah. Because for me, it made me, like, <laughs> want to seek Him. But for mm. you, it made you, like, so skeptical and even, like, angry. Like, why don't I feel this? Mm -hmm. I don't know, the next night, me and this other girl, we were asking the youth pastor so many questions. The same trip. Yeah, yeah. The whole time, I was kind of asking questions, like, after that experience. And I was, like, asking questions about science and, like, evolution and how these things, like, line up. Because I was Which in is biology. Good. Yeah, and I think that is good to question that. But I was kind of questioning from a perspective of, like, this doesn't make sense. Like, mm. it's not lining up. God, yeah. like, this is just, like, weird. How are you guys having so much faith right now? Even this this kid, like, he's really smart and he's, like, going to be a nurse or something like that. He's very knowledgeable about science. And I was like, how do you believe in God if evolution, blah, 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 blah. And he was just so firm in what he was saying about Jesus. And I was mm. like, this is weird. This is weird. And so then... <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh. <laughs> and then I started to kind of doubt. I was kind of becoming a skeptic. Um, and then I would like watch YouTube videos, like watch debates, mm -hmm. watch Bill Nye. And you would yeah. come to me. Yeah, especially when we went on our like, trips, like having those like 2 a.m. like 
conversations and she'd ask me like well what about this and i'd be like hold on let me go grab my bible <laughs> let me go grab my bible she's like okay <laughs> it's always the bible with you naima and i literally was like hold on let me get mad sorry <laughs> <laughs> you really interrogated me, although I was new with faith, and that was something that I think strengthened me and like made me also like kind of re-question as me recognizing that where she was coming from and her place like kind of anger and skepticism, not like looking to seek God and to find the truth, but looking to disprove something that she didn't really understand. It was tough to like kind of learn how to talk to her and like I had to get God's help so much and guidance because I had to like talk to you with such gentleness but also equip myself with answers mm -hmm. like when you asked me a question and I didn't know I said oh that's a really good question let me talk to my youth pastor about that oh let me look that up let's look for the answer together let's yeah. look in the bible it's not like I knew everything I tried my best to like give you answers always saying like I'm, my, I'm still new I don't know everything but here's what I can give you and here's where I can point you yeah and I think that that humility you had and like you were just so humble about it like you weren't prideful at all i feel like and i think that that just pointed me honestly toward god because it made me like wow she's just not even prideful about this like she still like believes in this without knowing all the answers and she's not acting like she does and i think that having that humble spirit and just coming to your friends with like just putting yourself down and like knowing that they're just struggling with something that you might not be able to understand but you have the truth mm and just like conveying that in a way that's like respecting them i guess and not yeah, being angry that but, they don't know but still bringing up the truth exactly did you ever feel like i was pushing it down your throat no honestly i don't think so i would sometimes get mad at you and like mm -hmm. talk about you <laughs> behind your back because for instance if i was like i want to do something with a boy and then i would i would ask you for advice i knew what your advice was gonna be <laughs> and like i didn't like why was i asking your advice i didn't even believe in god mm -hmm. but i think i just knew that god was real and i just didn't want to accept it and then you would give me advice that's the thing that i'm a firm firm believer on like if you're gonna give advice to someone and you are a christian you can say, I know you don't believe in God, but the only advice I can give you right now is this. I tried to say, I understand you don't believe in God. Like, this is what I would do. Like, she would ask me what I would do, too, a lot of the times. She was like, oh. I don't know why I would. I don't know. Did that build you up for something? Or, like, what do you think? I think that you always just giving me the truth. Like, even though it led me away for a while, led me to Christianity and, like, what it really is. Because I think that if you make up some version of it to sugarcoat it i guess mm. or to not really give the full truth to be like no it's fine then you're gonna lead people to like a false version of that's it that's huge and i think that if mm. i didn't know the truth like obviously i was angry because i wanted to do all these things you know mm -hmm. that i wasn't the able to do things. but i think you need to go through those stages of being angry at the truth mm. and then you come to the truth but you have to come to the truth you can't come to like some lie like when you came to christ i think that might have set the stage praise god for that like when you gave your life to Christ, it was so amazing because you knew what you were getting into. Mm -hmm. You read all of, you knew what you needed to give up. You knew what that meant. You knew what accepting Jesus meant. You know what dying to yourself meant. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think it took you a while to come to actually accepting God. And it took me a while to, like, she would, she, you were seeking for like a year. Yeah. Or how, how long? Maybe a little more? Or yeah, I think it was like a little bit less than a year. A little less than a year. And most of that was angry skepticism. Yeah, and I'd say that a lot of it came from a place of like wanting to know the truth. Mm. And even though it might have like also, like it was definitely a lot of anger and like a lot of me wanting to just go and do whatever I want and to kind of forget about this God idea and just to like be my own God. I think that it was a lot of like, me doubting and like i think that science is the truth and also like i don't know there's a verse in first corinthians and it's talking about how the natural person doesn't understand like the supernatural at all or it doesn't like if you're natural if you're totally natural you'll un understand natural things mm -hmm. and i think that that was just like a, like i was a very good example of that and they understood like science and evolution is like our way of coming into existence because the supernatural wasn't really an option I guess and you were never satisfied with the answers that I gave you you we were never satisfied with any answers at some point I had to say I had to give it to God it may, I didn't have the answers because you're not gonna know everything when you're in a relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. and say I don't know all the answers and I never will mm -hmm. and that was so difficult for you to do 
Yeah. Especially from that like science. Like I need all the facts right here in front of my face. Whatever I can't see is not true. I guess just the fact that Naima was always just open to having these conversations. She was always so, I guess, committed to it. And like what you were saying before, like you would set me up on like FaceTime calls with your youth pastor. She was just always so open to having conversations and so willing to. And I think that that's just, it was a really big part of me like having a really good understanding of Christianity and coming to Jesus because I just really was like very aware what aware of what I was getting myself into and mm. I had a lot of resources. But you also were not lazy. Like I think a lot of people mm. can get lazy with it and be like, yeah. Oh that doesn't seem true, so let me just not be a Christian. Yeah. Like you really, really searched. I think that's because like I had the idea in my head of like there is a reality. Whether it's evolution, whether it's Christianity, whether it's some other religion I guess. Like there is a truth. And I think that once I had that idea, I was like, I'm, I need to know something. Like, I can't just keep living my mm. life without without knowing anything. Because there's no backbone. Yeah, well, it's like you you know what's going on in the world. Mm. Like, if like when I was seeking, it was like, is evolution true? Like, am I really just here just, like, randomly? But I think that once you get the idea that there's some sort of truth out there, like, you can't deny that. It's not just my truth, not just your truth. There's a truth to the exist our existence. Mm -hmm. Whether it's science, whether it's something we don't know, whether it's Christianity, like... If you think about it, that's 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 true. Once you have that idea in your head, it's kind of hard to just be complacent. When was the shift for you? When when were you like, okay, wait a minute, this might be true? Well, I think it was honestly not even like that for a while because I think that my hostility, my skepticism kind of just like simmered away and just kind of faded. And then I started- Because you were tired of looking. Is it yeah, of honestly, I think, I don't even know. You were tired of fighting God. Yeah. You were ready to accept him. Yeah, and then I just started going to youth group with you, like, twice. Mm. I, like, two weeks before I um, gave my life to Jesus, I bought a Bible for no reason. Oh, my gosh. It's a, so, it's a Christian store. It was like, hey, Emma, I think I want to buy a Bible. And I was like, w wait, what? That was purely God. I don't even know why I did that. There's no reason. I was like, I wasn't, like, pushing it. Mm -hmm. Like, she knew all she needed to know. I wasn't going to be like, hey, what are you doing still? Like, no, I was just praying... I was loving her. I was just, that's all. It was. And then God worked and, oh, I want to buy a Bible. And it was like $50. And then she was like, that's really expensive. And I was like, you're, you're going to be using this for a while. Like, this is a really good investment. And you're like, oh, maybe I should. No, I do. So. I like remember telling Amber and Grace, like, <laughs> okay, I stopped like talking to you, but I lost hope for you. I know, that actually makes me kind of sad. It does make me sad too. But I was like, okay, this girl is just always questioning. I can't <laughs> keep up with her. I'll keep praying for you because not praying is a sign of... Losing faith in God. Losing faith. So I was like, okay, I won't stop praying. I won't. During the summer even, I felt like we were like kind of drifting apart a little bit. She was doing stuff and I wanted to do stuff that she was doing. And then I felt like I was kind of getting like pulled and like having these other desires that I didn't want to have. So it's yeah. like, I don't know if I can be friends with her anymore. Like, God, like, am I going to have to give this friendship up? And so, He's like, so yeah, and even like that weekend in Maine, I was debating whether or not I should go. Really? Because I knew I was going with three non-Christians. At one point, I had to check myself and talk to God about, like, am I going to go there and share the gospel and still be firm in my faith and be able to do that without, like, trying what they're going to do or without swearing or without doing this or this? Or am I going to kind of struggle with that? Like, I have to know the line and know my limit. And then the Bible happened. Yeah. Not to say you can't be around non-Christians or that they're any less at all. I just had to evaluate where my heart was at at the time and what it was desiring because my goal as a Christian is to please God and glorify Him above all else. Also something interesting I was telling you today at the beach. Like a month before I became a Christian, I had my first like real anxiety attack and it was mm. really terrible. I wasn't really grounded. I was kind of just living like doing tasks day by day. And then I had another anxiety attack that birthday weekend, actually. It was like I couldn't breathe, and I was just, like, sobbing, and, like, I thought I was choking, and mm. it was just really bad. They were all praying for me, and I was just kind of like, okay. Will you pray for her? You Oh, also my gosh. Also, Grace, remember when we had that dinner with me, you, and Grace, and you guys, like, we all prayed together? Yes. I think at this point, I was just not hostile. At this point, I was like, Cecilia, I'm not walking on eggshells right now. We're praying. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to pray, you don't have to. And I wasn't, like, angry about it. No, and I was, I was, like, with you guys. I, I always yeah. thought that was really nice whenever you want to do that. You, you accepted prayer, didn't you? Yeah. I you did. always, I think that's really something a lot of people do. Like, 
other non-Christian people, they'll always accept prayer, which is really crazy. So the major shift was when, again, randomly, I had gone to youth group twice, and I remember we had this like little paper, and it said like stretch your faith, and it was like this series that they were doing, mm -hmm. and they had like all these boxes, and it was like which ones do you want to do next? And I checked off follow Jesus. I think I was like okay i think that i'll just do this i didn't really know what i was doing you know and Maybe. i was like i still don't really believe like i don't know <laughs> like uh, like who knows okay really. what now <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then i was listening to a christian song there was jesus it's a really good one i was just listening to it and i was just like sobbing and i was like what's going on right now it was the holy spirit coming into me it was like an incredible making experience his big arrival yes and before <laughs> this i just viewed the world like product of evolution just natural world who knows right when i looked out the window after i like was sobbing and like like kind of like praying like worshiping i don't even know and then i just saw the world as god's creation and it was like my eyes were just open and like a veil was lifted over my eyes mm. and it was just like like 360 180 something <laughs> i think i texted you like this song and then i called you and you're like was that you giving your life to jesus and i was like yeah and you're like oh my god because i know grace was talking to you more because at this point like our friend group kind of like got merged she met what was my christian friends that friendship of like amber grace and i which is in this vlog like you can see us three like that was definitely from god us three and then by that time i was like oh cecilia meet grace and then at that dinner you did and she prayed for you and it's like oh meet amber so you yeah. met her at retreats and then quinn you knew quinn the whole time um because of quinn and clay at retreats and like everything because they go to youth group too that was also a huge part of it i think that god really just set up some beautiful friendships for me to just like step into for a while you saw just me i think yeah and then all of a sudden like mm -hmm. you're meeting all these new people that are also christians just like wait, wait i want to get on this <laughs> the week after i started like talking to my classmates about jesus no i think it was like that week because then in class like we were talking about something about religion and I, like spoke up about it. I, was, I feel like when you're this might be bad. <laughs> I feel like when you really are saved, you you don't want to wait. You don't want to wait cuz it's like it's not like you're slowly gradually becoming saved. It's like you're saved. There like, you go. No. Nope, the Holy Spirit is it. in you. You believe in God now. It's you are you have faith. Mm. You have faith and then you want to tell everyone. Yeah, like this is this is the best news ever. I think that's what makes it so powerful about like the kind of community you were around. You knew a huge part about being a Christian mm -hmm. was sharing the gospel. Yeah. No one watered that down to you. Well, when you called me, I think I started crying. I just wanted you to go to heaven with me. Like I wanted you to know, not only heaven, but I wanted you to live your life like you were going to go to heaven. Yeah. Like with such freeness. Because I, I, I saw you seeking the world and it like really hurt me like to see you looking for things not in God because I knew you weren't going to get satisfied yeah. and like I know I don't think I ever told you that no. like when you were doing things yeah. but I was kind of like oh gosh <laughs> like that's not the right path honey <laughs> just turn around now just see just yeah. yourself. <laughs> I don't know I feel like I've just been on this high like God God really worked in you and that was not me at all like I was just like I was just your friend and I was doing my part in my faith and my relationship with God and God used that. Yeah, and that's, that's, real, all, that's all he calls us to do. That's literally all it was. Or in the beginning, God gave me a lot of really powerful experiences of his presence, a lot of like really joyous moments that I could really tell were from God. Like I would break down crying and I just feel his presence. He just gave me so much to work with at the beginning. Like faith was really strong and then I went through like doubts, like speed seasons almost. Mm -hmm. I feel like my faith was really built quickly. That's so it. even though you did come to Christ and you had your experiences, you still doubted and that mm -hmm. made your faith stronger. And I think I remember at one point you telling me like, uh, I doubted today, like you were frustrated with yourself, but doubting is a part of faith. This is like where I tell you like, it's normal to doubt. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah, the discipling is going to always continue. Mm -hmm. I feel like for both of it, like iron sharpens iron now. Yeah. But for sure. your friends, some advice. She never really forced anything. She invited me to things. She was just always. Persistently invited. Yeah, like it wasn't just like a one time no, thing. And just like I invited her so you many You invited times. me a lot. Bringing it up a couple of times, but not like pushing, pushing it in their face. Like making it mm -hmm. known, the truth known, and making um, it Being known an to your example. friends that you are a Christian. And then they understand what's different about you. But then, like, letting them come to you in their times of need, I guess. Yeah, and I would say, like, I felt it a responsibility for me to really live like Jesus. Mm. Like, 
Because you, I knew you were watching me, and I knew if I like did something that you knew was not biblical, because although you were not reading the Bible, you knew what was right and what wasn't in God's eyes. Yeah. And you were like, Naima, why are you doing that? And I'd be like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I remember like you were like starting to try to a little bit. I don't know if we should say that. You were you just say that. stuff. We were starting to try stuff, and I was like, Naima, wait, is this a sin? You're like. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I also saw you like growing too, and mm. it was like it wasn't like you were just like this perfect person. Yeah. And like to to be vulnerable with your people, like with your non-Christian friends too. Yeah, I was like honestly like I've been struggling with this. Yeah. And it's not right, and I'm working on it. Whenever I had like moments with God or like kind of revelations in the Bible, or whenever like I finished a new book in the Bible, I would tell Cecilia, and I wouldn't hide that part of myself from her when like she um understood i was a christian she recognized how big that was in my life and how that was my life because we were friends we both had parts of our lives that we didn't really have in common or share those same interests but we still love each other and we still like listen to one another and like support each other let me just tell you if you really seek for the truth of your existence you're going to come to god yeah, moral of the story. We hope that this video has impacted you. If you're still watching, comment. Cecilia's social media are going to be in the description. She goes on and off, so don't take it personal <laughs> if she doesn't answer. Mm -hmm. I'm usually always on my social medias. It's been real. Thanks for talking to us and listening. I'd love to hear some of your testimonies, like your biggest moments. If you don't feel like he, you, you kind of want to follow him, but you don't really believe yet, just really seek him. Read your Bible. Go to a youth group. Get engaged in some community. All right. Bye. Bye. Cecilia, what are you doing?